Well, a very good afternoon and welcome to our coverage of what could be a decisive match in the WSL this season. We are live at the Academy Stadium as title hopefuls Manchester City host relegation threatened Birmingham City. Well, WSL leaders Chelsea aren't in league action this weekend, so Manchester City can leapfrog Emma Hayes' side at the summit this afternoon with a victory. Although the London club will have a game in hand. Chelsea themselves were in Champions League action a little earlier today. They booked their place in the Champions League final. Well, as for Gareth Taylor's side, well, they are unbeaten in 16 top flight matches, doing all they can to keep on the coattails of Chelsea domestically. Birmingham, meanwhile, need the points for a whole other reason. A last gasp equaliser against Aston Villa in midweek has given them every chance of survival but a defeat here would mean they would be bang in trouble heading into the final game of the season. It is likely to be a decisive weekend in the WSL. Let's take a look at some of the results and scores that we have already seen. And uh, Aston Villa against West Ham kicked off proceedings. That finished nil-nil. That is a uh, big game at the uh, bottom of the WSL table. Birmingham will have one eye on uh, the result there. Everton against Arsenal. That uh, is in the final minutes. That's 1-1. It's uh, also half-time in two other matches. Bristol City against Manchester United. Manchester United, of course, pushing for Champions League football. That's goalless. Half-time as well in the match between Reading and Brighton. That is 2-2. And our game between Manchester City and Birmingham uh, gets underway in just under 10 minutes. Well, let's hear from both managers then, starting with Manchester City boss Gareth Taylor, who's been speaking to Reshmin Chowdhury. Gareth, lovely to see you as always. Look, I know that this is a, a big game in the sense that you have a chance to gain an advantage on Chelsea today. I suppose all you can do today is your job, and that is to win. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, we're, um, we have an opportunity to go top of the league, and uh, we also have an opportunity to uh, become probably the only team that hasn't been beaten at home all season. So we've spoken to the players about that and our home form has been very good. We've only drew two games at home, never lost. So uh, we want to maintain that today and, and go out and, and play our game. You've got Lauren in, you've got Chloe Kelly in, you've got quite, you know, sort of a, that young attacking lineup as well. How sort of fired up are they, I suppose, going into this? Yeah, of course, the players want to want to finish the season strong. You know, we've, we've got... Uh, We've got this game today to take care of and then obviously away at West Ham and um, we need to maintain our end of the deal, if you like, and uh, that's winning both games and, and playing good football like we try to, like we have done all season um, and really maintaining this kind of real, real good high performances that we put in since the uh, start of the new year. Carly, you go into this one off the back of a, a big, big goal against uh, your local rivals. Um, what does that do for the spirit in the team? And... Uh, you know, given that this is going to be a slightly different game as well against a side that are fighting to be at the top of the table. Huge, yeah. I mean, we were very much below par at the, um, against Villa, but the, the late goal, obviously, as you saw from the celebrations, created a, a little bit of euphoria. Um, but listen, we come here today where it's a free hit, um, no pressure whatsoever. We can, we can. It's a day, in my opinion, that you relax because actually you're playing against one of the best teams in, in Europe right now. So um, we'll enjoy the occasion, that's for sure. And what does it do in terms of your survival hopes? Because you're in the best position at the moment of the other teams. But in that respect, you probably can't relax. Is that right? Um, yes and no. I suppose pending the outcome of this situation um, that came out yesterday, I, I would like to think we are safe um, pending a massive, massive turnaround on goal difference. So, um, yeah, look, we're in, a, we're in a good place. We know what we had to do. And, um, yeah, I think we will enjoy this one today. Well, Tottenham goalkeeper... Becky Spencer is watching this one with me this afternoon. And Becky, good afternoon to you. You've picked a couple of key players to watch this afternoon, starting with uh, Manchester City's Lauren Hemp. Yep, yeah, I've gone for Lauren Hemp, uh, purely based on you know her assists this year. I think she's gone for seven assists, um, and she's also scoring. She scored six this season, um, and she's dangerous. I mean, I could have picked a number of their players, but yeah, Lauren Hemp's definitely the standout for them. They have uh, an array of tacking options, don't they, Manchester City? It's going to be potentially a busy afternoon for a, a fellow member of the goalkeepers' union in Hannah Hampton. Yep, I've gone for Hannah Hampton on, on the Birmingham City team. Um, you know, she's a great young goalkeeper coming through, and I'm, you know, I'm expecting her to have a really busy game, so um, I've picked her as, as the one to watch for Birmingham.
So a busy afternoon then potentially for uh, Hannah Hampton inside the Birmingham City goal. We are uh, set for kickoff then in this one. Manchester City against Birmingham City coming up in around five minutes. Well, it is a great opportunity for Gareth Taylor's side to keep the pressure on league leaders Chelsea. A win here and they would move top, perhaps temporarily, but the WSL title race promises to go right to the wire. Steph Horton not available for Manchester City in this one this afternoon, likely to miss the remainder of the season. Birmingham, the opposition today, they are not yet safe. They earned a crucial point in midweek against their rivals, Aston Villa. That boosted their survival hopes, but a defeat here, and they will be nervously looking over their shoulder. The two sides are in the tunnel and about to make their way out onto the field of play here at the Academy Stadium. It has been a big week, of course, for Birmingham City. You heard Carla Ward a few moments ago speaking about the Potential issue that the club will face after Ruesha Littlejohn featured against Reading when she should have been suspended last weekend. The club appealing to the FA, or have until Tuesday to appeal to the FA. They could receive punishment for that, which could have huge ramifications at the foot of the WSL table. At the other end, though, Manchester City, well, they have the opportunity to move top of the standings, although Chelsea will have a game in hand. If Chelsea win their remaining two WSL matches, they will be crown champions, no matter what Manchester City do. But Gareth Taylor's side know that a victory here this afternoon would keep the pressure on Emma Hayes's side. And a quick word about Chelsea. They have booked their place in the Champions League final for the very first time. They've seen off Bayern Munich ladies 4-1 at Kings Meadow, meaning that Chelsea have booked their place in the final 5-3 on aggregate. So Chelsea's hopes of the quadruple are very much still alive, although Manchester City hoping they can have some say over where this WSL title will end up this season. Well, Tottenham goalkeeper Becky Spencer is alongside me, Paul Scott, for this one. The two teams, Becky, in the tunnel, about to make their way out on to the field of play. Manchester City will be coming into this one, won't they, as, as clear favourites, you would have thought. Yeah, um, you know, obviously, you know, they're, they're second in the league at the moment. And um, yeah, they look, they're, they're going to be favourites to win the game. But obviously, with um, Birmingham, you know, getting a positive result midweek against Aston Villa, you know, they're going to take that momentum into this game. And you know, I can, I can imagine they'll be very enthusiastic uh, in the game. And I, you know, I hope to see a, a really, really good game today. How big was that moment for Birmingham? Do you think in, in midweek, be a tricky sorry, the substitute scoring in the 96th minute against? their rivals Aston Villa that's going to be a real boost of confidence yeah of course and obviously with it being a derby as well you know it's a massive game you know when you're struggling and you're at the foot of the table and you're you know you're fighting for your lives down there you know any positive result is you know is massive and and for them you know it was really positive and now they can take you know the momentum into this game and, and kind of thrive off of that result on Wednesday well, Manchester City, they are unbeaten in five in all competitions since a defeat to Barcelona in the Champions League they have won 12 of their last 13 league matches as we take a look then at the two teams for you. And uh, Manchester City have made three changes to the side that drew 2-2 with Chelsea last time out. That game went some way to deciding where the WSL title will end up. American duo Abby Dahlkemper and Sam Ewis drop to the bench. Demi Stokes is not in the match day squad. And Steph Horton, of course, is likely to miss the remainder of the season. So Esme Morgan and Georgia Stanway come into defence. Laura Coombs into midfield. Well, Birmingham City have made two changes. Ruesha Littlejohn, of course, is out after playing while well. should have been serving a suspension against Reading last week. Carla Ward's side also uh, without the threat of Sarah Mailing, Emily Murphy and uh, Lucy Whip coming in. Viatriki Sari, who scored that equalising goal against Aston Villa in midweek, has to settle once again for a place on the bench. A 
Well, Chloe Kelly with eight uh, WSL goals to her name this season for Manchester City. Part of that deadly trio for Gareth Taylor's side alongside Ellen White and Lauren Hemp. Emily Heaslip is the referee for this one this afternoon. I, I did, yeah, thanks. Well, it is a big game at both ends of the WSL table. Manchester City still harbour hopes of claiming the title. Birmingham City still under the threat of relegation. As both sets of players take the knee in the ongoing show of solidarity in the battle against discrimination. It will be Ellen White for Manchester City getting matters underway. The home side in their familiar kit of sky blue shooting away to the right hand side. Birmingham City in their change kit all red this afternoon shooting away to the left hand side. It is a match that has massive ramifications at both ends of the WSL table and Manchester City have an early opportunity. They're causing problems here. It falls kindly for Chloe Kelly, whose shot is saved by Hammerhampton with inside the first 30 seconds. You know, like I said, um, you know, Hannah Hampton was one to watch, and I knew it was going to be a busy day for her. And as you can tell, after 30 seconds, she's already making off a, pulling off a, you know, a magnific magnificent save down to her right. And the corner's been taken. Manchester City have started very, very brightly, as perhaps we expected. But Hannah Hampton called into action. She was equal to it. But warning signs, really, for Birmingham. I'm get, getting close to lights, by the way. Hannah Hampton, who actually moved to Spain when she was five years old, started her career at Villarreal. It was actually an outfield player before uh, moving Kate from Ed, I'm getting false cue lights. into Kate from Ed, I'm getting goal false cue lights, by the way. after signing for Stoke in 2010. You know, you can kind of see that in, in Hannah's game as well. You know, she was an outfield player and, you know, she brings that. She's got great distribution. She's, you know, left and right footed and, you know, she's very comfortable with the ball at her feet. So you can kind of see that she's been an outfield player beforehand. Manchester City have one possession back. And it was Coombs giving chase. That's going to be a throw into Birmingham and an opportunity now for, for the visitors to just try and take the sting out of these opening uh, couple of minutes. Drons wins the ball back for the home side. First touch for Ellie Roebuck. Well, it's been a difficult first season for uh, Carla Ward, the Birmingham City manager. Plenty of issues to deal with. A few weeks ago, a number of Birmingham players writing an open letter complaining to the board about the facilities on offer to them and the provisions. Carla Ward acting as a go-between between between the players and the board as Manchester City come forward again. Birmingham have to keep their concentration here in these early exchanges, wave after wave of Manchester City attack. As Walsh has it, here's bronze. Coombs looking for Kelly, but that's well intercepted by Holloway. And Claudia Walker, a lone figure up top for Birmingham. It could be a long afternoon. Yeah, for sure. As you can see, as uh, Birmingham came out there to attack, Claudia Walker's very isolated up top. Um, so, you know, if they're going to kind of get out of their half, they're going to have to look for a little bit of quality down the wings. Bronze tries to keep that one in. Holloway is there. Good covering, though, by Lucy Bronze. Talking about uh, Chelsea reaching the Champions League final. Lucy Bronze has three Champions Leagues to her name. With Leon. Just quality everywhere you look in this Manchester City squad. 
Walsh. Birmingham with numbers behind the ball. Just trying to keep discipline, keep their concentration. And keep Manchester City at bay. Bronze again. And this is where Claudia Walker will have to give chase, and she does. Holds the ball up, looking for support, waiting for options. That's a good foot in by Alex Greenwood. And Walsh picks it up, and Manchester City come again. The opening five minutes has been all Manchester City, and Hemp is in behind. Just couldn't find a blue shirt as she looked to pull it back there, Lauren Hemp, but she'd managed to find the space in behind that Birmingham defence. And Becky, the opening five minutes falling into the pattern that perhaps we thought it might, Manchester City seeing plenty of the ball. Yeah, um, you know, it's just waves and waves of attack and they're keeping the ball so well. Only, only five minutes gone, but, you know, it's hard to get out your half and you kind of penned in for so long. Um, and they've just got so much quality on the ball. Looking for an outlet. And that outlet is Bronze, who has space. Kelly. Running at Holloway, getting the cross in as well. And this is the, uh, the pattern, this is the outlet for Birmingham. We've seen it already, it's uh, Walker who will have to give chase, and she does against Greenwood. Looking for support, no shirts in the box. It was uh, Jamie Lee Napier giving chase, but Claudia Walker was an isolated figure. It's going to be an exhausting afternoon, you sense, for, for Claudia Walker. Yeah, I mean, she was in a great position there, you know, run, running down the line there. And obviously the players can't, the rest of her teammates can't get up in time to, to, to help her out. You know, she can only do so much. So it's going to be a long afternoon, I think, just viewing off the first six minutes of the game. Claudia Walker did win the uh, WSL title with Liverpool back in 2014. Has scored five goals for Birmingham this season. Is their leading scorer in the WSL. But Birmingham will be missing the attacking threat of Sarah Mailing, who's not in the squad this afternoon. Sarah Mailing has assisted five of the 13 goals that Birmingham scored in the WSL. So that's going to be a big miss for uh, Carla Ward's side this afternoon. Bronze with the foot in. Birmingham for the first time really in the match, having a foot on the ball and a spell of possession, but that's been won back by Walsh. Coombs. Walsh, Bronze is offering an option. This is Lucy Bronze now. Walsh again, Weir. Given away by Walsh, and that's going to be a free kick to the visitors. Well, Birmingham are three games unbeaten in all competitions. They do only have one win in six. If they could get something from this match this afternoon, it would go a long, long way to boosting their chances of survival in the WSL this season. Emily Murphy brought down but that will be a throw-in to Birmingham. Yeah. 
Ellie Roebuck out to Lucy Bronze and Manchester City come again. Concentration and discipline is so important, isn't it, Becky, for, for Birmingham in, in this opening spell of the match, just to try and keep it tight, keep it disciplined and keep, keep Manchester City playing in front of you if you can. Yeah, you've got to keep them in front at all costs. And I think, you know, so far, as you can see, they've got two banks of four. Um, and they're trying to try, like, trying to ride the wave at the moment. But We're with the shot. It's uh, spilled by Hampton. And following up is Chloe Kelly. And Manchester City have found a way through with inside the first 10 minutes. Nothing Hannah Hampton could do. She could only parry it into the path of Chloe Kelly. And Manchester City are up and running. Yeah, I mean, it was an incredible goal. I mean, the build-up play was, you know, they were so patient and they have so much options going into the box. They've got pullbacks, you know, and there's a player waiting to, you know, they're kind of queuing up to put it away. So, you know, it was a great save by Hannah Hampton at the first fort, but, you know, the defenders couldn't get it clear and Chloe Kelly finishes it nicely. The thumbs up from Gareth Taylor. Birmingham's defence has been breached inside the opening 10 minutes. And Chloe Kelly with her ninth goal of the season. Chloe Kelly, who this week was nominated as the player of the season or one of the nominees, potentially, for the WSL player of the season. Not just uh, getting amongst the goals, Chloe Kelly, this season. Also has 11 assists. Her form has been crucial in Manchester City's push for the title. It's a tough not ask now for, for Birmingham, Becky. They, they came with a game plan. We could see what it was to keep it tight. We were just talking about it. Of course, Claudia Walker was, was the outlet. But at this stage of the match, do you become more aggressive do you try and go forward or do you still try and keep it tight for the for the time being i mean it's a difficult situation to be in you know when you concede so early um you know if you try and you know, nick a goal you're kind of leaving yourself open and with the quality that man city have got they'll take every advantage of it so i think you know for now i think they just need to keep riding the wave out um you know and just it's damage limitations at the moment i think for them and they need to keep the score line down um going into the second half really And it was just that uh, change of pace, wasn't it, that uh, set up that opportunity from Lauren Hemp, left side of the area, dropped the shoulder. That's the quality that Manchester City possess, and they're coming forward again. Bronze. Esme Morgan playing in the heart of the uh, Manchester City defence this afternoon. Only 20 years old. Holloway should shepherd that one out, and she does, a throw into Manchester City. A couple of other scorelines in the WSL to tell you about so far this afternoon. As Gareth Taylor barks some orders to his side. Aston Villa and West Ham drew nil-nil. And Arsenal, they won 2-1 at Everton. A 94th minute winner there. And that means that uh, Arsenal have secured Champions League football next season. A reminder, if you're just tuning in, that Chelsea have reached the Champions League final after seeing off Bayern Munich 4-1 earlier today. Chelsea on course still for the quadruple. The nearest WSL rivals, Manchester City, will move top if they win this one. But City will only have one game to play. Chelsea will have two left. And if Emma Hayes' side win both of them, they will retain the WSL title. Coombe 
Williams for Manchester City. One of three changes for uh, Gareth Taylor's side. Coming into midfield. Bronze. Birmingham just gifted possession back to Manchester City and Kelly has bronze running in field. I mean, Man City are so hard to, to defend, you know, when their build-up play is incredible. Uh, the full-backs come in and they kind of, it's like an inverted role that they play and it makes it so hard to mark and to track people's movements. Um, and as you can see, Lucy Bronze and, and Georgia Stanway on the left there have been involved heavily in, in most of Man City's build-up play. Um, so, yeah, that's something that Birmingham are going to have to try and nullify sooner or later. Walsh for Manchester City. Hemp has pulled over to that left-hand side, trying to find a pocket of space. It's uh, given away by Stanway. Emma Kelly coming forward for Birmingham. But the, uh, the visitors just struggling to get their foot on the ball, really, and have any meaningful possession. As soon as they get uh, the ball, Manchester City win it back, and they've done so now. Here's bronze. Walsh pulling the strings for Manchester City in central midfield. Walsh again looking for the run of White in behind, but just over hit. Ellen White almost into double figures for the season in the WSL, nine goals. Has three WSL titles, two FA Cups, to a name, of course, from her time with Arsenal. <laughs> Rare touch for Ellie Roebuck in the opening uh, 15 minutes or so. WSL Golden Glove winner last year, the Manchester City keeper. And it's exactly as you predicted, Becky. Birmingham have stuck with that game plan. The goal hasn't really changed anything. Yeah, I mean, it's important for them. They have to really stick to the game plan. And like I said, it's damage limitations. You don't want to concede another one soon after the first. So, yeah, it's really important that they concentrate and stay resilient throughout. Bronze trying to create space for the cross. Still going. Really good run by Lucy Bronze. Kelly. Good ball in towards Hemp at the far post. But it bounces once and into the gloves of Hannah Hampton. Chloe Kelly getting the opening goal and looking to turn provider on that occasion. Yeah, between uh, Chloe Kelly and, and Lauren Hemp, I mean, they've been given fullbacks nightmares this season uh, between the two of them, you know, with the goals and the assists, you know, they've been incredible for Man City this season and, you know, their form is just, yeah, it's just incredible. 14 goals in 33 appearances in all competitions for Chloe Kelly. And here she is now causing problems once again. But Birmingham have dealt with it. And that is uh, Walker doing what she's been tasked with this afternoon, holding the ball up, just trying to bring teammates into play, just trying to relieve that pressure, really, for the uh, the defence. Yeah, I mean, she's doing her job up there at the end of the day. You know, the balls are going up to her, she's holding it up, and she's trying to, you know, entice players to, to come and join in with her. Um, and it's just about that final ball now. You know, she's busy, she's a busy player. Um, she causes defenders a lot of trouble. You know, you've got to be alert when she's playing. And, yeah, at the moment, she's doing her job. It's just now up to the rest of the, her teammates to, to kind of come and support her. Saw there Carla Ward looking on. It has, as I mentioned, been a, a tough first season in the WSL, really. Carla Ward appointed as Birmingham boss last August. Won uh, three matches of her 16 in charge this season. Not just having those off-field issues to deal with, with regards to uh, the players and their 
lack of satisfaction with the uh, provisions and facilities provided for them by the club. But also now this issue with the FA as well. The FA are waiting to hear Birmingham's response after uh, Marisha Littlejohn played against Reading last week when she should have been serving a suspension. The club say it was an administrative error. Littlejohn not in the uh, match day squad this afternoon. But all eyes really now on the FA to decide what, if any, punishment they will hand out to Birmingham. If it is in the form of a points deduction, then it has massive implications at the uh, foot of the WSL table. Whereas things stand, Birmingham will be two points above the drop zone going into the uh, final match next weekend. Here is Bronze. Hemp. Running at Brougham. Walsh. Bronze has come infield into a central position. Exactly what you were talking about there, Becky. Hard to track the run. Cross in, looking for White, cleared by the visitors. Let them pass through us. Hemp. And here is Bronze. And again, Chloe Kelly. Offering an option out wide. Cross is blocked though. But no outlet. It's really, really difficult, isn't it, for Birmingham? And especially against a team like um, like Man City. I mean, like we said earlier, Paul, um, you know, Man City, they can attack and they like to recycle the ball. So even if the attack's not right, they can just come out and, you know, they really enjoy being in possession of the ball. And I think, you know, watching this, you can just tell they just really enjoy being in charge and, and just dominating the dominating the game throughout with possession and just everything really so it just proves that just a slightly heavy touch there a rare error from Lauren Hemp but look Birmingham struggling to clear their lines Hannah no, Harris Scott clears for Birmingham was that a pullback Emily he slipped the referee says no free kick, so Manchester City recycle possession and come again with Coombs. Here is Bronze. Stanway's turn to pull into a central position and try and pull the strings, and they've released Hemp, and Hemp has White lurking on the edge of the six-yard area. Kelly's there as well, and that's the second goal for Chloe Kelly. Another tap-in from inside the six-yard area. Kelly in the right place at the right time and Manchester City have doubled their advantage yeah I mean like I said before um, when they get into them positions down the line and you know they're in crossing positions or pullback positions they've got so many players filling the box and so many so much support and so many options and you can't kind of you know get hold of every single player and it's so important that you've got to track your runner and you know be diligent in this situation because you can't leave a player like Chloe Kelly you know free in the box like that well it wasn't too dissimilar to the first goal in some respects again it was Lauren Hemp down the left hand side causing all the problems and again it was Chloe Kelly in the middle reacting quickest and Manchester City looked like keeping their end of the bargain in terms of keeping the WSL title race alive until the final day um, I think it's important now for Birmingham, you know, I think they've got to kind of start solving some problems on the pitch. You know, it's the same goal, it's literally like history repeating itself there. It was two of the sim similar goals 
Um, you know, they've got to find a way of eradicating that kind of goal or trying to put more pressure on the ball so they can't get into that position in the first place or, you know, just making sure that everyone is tracking and, you know, and checking their shoulders in the box. Hampton with the clearance. Walker wins it back. And again, no real outlet for Carla Ward's side. Manchester City, they're unbeaten in 16 WSL matches. Their last defeat coming against Chelsea back in October. Who knew at the time how costly that defeat could end up being in terms of where the WSL title ends up this season. It's the only time that Gareth Taylor's side have lost in the league this season. It just shows you, you know, how how hard it is to win this league this year. Um, that's a, you know, their stats are, are worthy of, of champions, really. So it just shows you how, you know, how difficult it is to win the WSL this year. And last season they finished second on points per game. They were one point ahead of Chelsea at the time when the season was was curtailed, but they played one game fewer. Bronze gets the ball in, and Birmingham get the ball clear. Almost falls kindly for Emily Murphy. some similarities between this match and when Birmingham traveled to Chelsea a few weeks ago similar pattern similar tactics being deployed by Carla Ward side five at the back trying to keep it tight and against Chelsea on that day it was uh, only one nil going into the 45th minute but Sam Kerr scored a second and a third in first half stoppage time just to put the game really out of reach in the blink of an eye Birmingham thought they would uh, have kept it to one at the break but Chelsea turned on the style scored a couple of quick fire goals and just like that the match had slipped away from Birmingham City It's been a difficult season for, for Birmingham. Looking at the team sheet today as well, only four players on the bench for Carla Ward's side. Including Via Triki Sari, who scored that equaliser against Villa in midweek. And the Greek striker coming on for her Birmingham WSL debut. Potentially earning a vital point. Here, though, Birmingham have a corner to defend. Greenwood lurking. The centre half up from the back. Walsh with the shot. Stanway's ball is a little bit wayward. Weir can't keep it in. That's the issue, isn't it? When you when you deploy these sort of tactics, it's that teams such as Chelsea and Manchester City, they just can turn it on in a flash, in an instant. You can you can work so hard and do so well for so long, but they can just turn it on, turn on the style. I think also against these teams as well, you know, you need some element of luck. Um, you know, going into the final third, you need some kind of breakaway. But, you know, Man City are just so comfortable. And after the second goal, like, the, you know, the centre-halves are even playing, you know, in front of the halfway line now, and they can enjoy so much possession and just get their movements in. And, yeah, it's just that I think Birmingham are just a, a yard or two off. There's a long-range effort coming in. It's well wide of Hannah Hampton's goal in the end.
And it was a speculative effort. Well, Birmingham are without a win in five away games. Shepherds that back to Hannah Hampton. Was bundled to the turf. looking to switch it out to Hemp. We're making the run through the middle, White as well. Hemp looking to cause problems, but that's good defending. Yeah, that was much better defending then. I mean, to, to nullify, you know, their strengths, Man City, you have to, you know, get in their faces a little bit and, you know, kind of don't back off and don't give them any space. And that defending there just showed what, you know, what kind of results you can get out of it. Well, Lauren Hemp down that left-hand side has caused the problems that have led to both the goals so far. She was looking to do likewise there. Didn't quite catch who it was with the tackle, but it prevented Manchester City from having another sight on goal. I think these uh, breaks in play, you know, are really important for, for Birmingham. It breaks up what Man City are doing and, you know, just to gain a little bit of yardage up the pitch. I know this is in their own half, but it's still gaining a few yards into their, you know, into their half. Um, and it just breaks up what Man City are doing and just breaks up the momentum a little bit and just gives everyone a bit of a respite. It was uh, Emma Kelly with that tackle a few moments ago on Lauren Hemp. again has been pulling all the strings really for Manchester City in that central midfield position making things happen for the home side here is a Stanway and his Walsh once again bronze central position white comes deep Uh, young player, a uh, heart of defence, Kelly, running at uh, Holloway. That's a uh, good defending again, though, by Rebecca Holloway. Seven trophies already in her Manchester City career, making her debut for the club back in 2014. Greenwood. Alex Greenwood in defence alongside uh, Esme Morgan. Arrived also from uh, Lyon. In September, along with Lucy Bronze. Here's Walsh again, and again, 
Walsh's ball out wide to bronze creating problems for Birmingham Walsh good footwork from Walsh bronze has Kelly to her left hand side Coombs with the cross it's gonna fall for bronze who just gets that one all wrong even the best can sometimes get it wrong I, I think she's just gone with the wrong foot there I think maybe a left footed strike would have been or maybe just to take a touch in that instance but you know she's full of confidence Lucy and you know nothing's really beyond her well Manchester City have been WSL runners up for three seasons Gareth Taylor just coming up to a year in the role as Manchester City manager now. And as you say, Becky, in a normal season, the type of form that Manchester City have shown would have been enough to, uh, to secure the title, but Chelsea just keep raising the standards. Yeah, it just shows, you know, the quality of the league as a whole is just, you know, it's just becoming so so much better and yeah that is their form is worthy of champions but like you said Chelsea are just you know they're just a, a force to be reckoned with so you know their game against them the other week you know was a really important one you know Man City kind of needed to win that game um, to kind of put another you know stamp in into the, the title race but it's you know it's incredible that it's going like right down to the wire anyways. City coming forward again with Coombs. Kelly uh, all the way across, it was Hemp arriving. And, uh, claims for a penalty, but uh, Emily Heaslip says no. Play continues and Manchester City come again with Walsh. Yeah, that looked like a sore one on Hemp there. I think she's kicked through the player as well, so that looked like a sore one. Here is Morgan. Morgan thought about switching it out wide to, to Hemp, who's back to her feet, playing on. She seems to be showing no ill effects of that collision a few moments ago. Kelly and Walsh combining. Walsh thought about the shot, didn't she? Out to Hemp. Walsh again. And this is what Manchester City do. They just keep the ball so well. Coombs to Kelly. It's a good foot in. And now a possible opportunity to try and nick the ball back for Birmingham but Morgan was there snuffing out the danger you can kind of see um, Birmingham is starting to frustrate Man City a little bit now you know they're defending a lot better they're a lot, a lot more on the front foot um, but they still can't get out of their half I think that you know there's no outlet still and it's you know it's very difficult for them to gain any kind of possession Well, Emily Heaslip with a decision to make a few moments ago. It was Lauren Hemp colliding with Emma Kelly. Correct decision for you or a spot kick there? Yeah, no, that's not, that's not a penalty. That'll be a bit soft, I think, that one. <laughs> well, Chloe Kelly's two tap-ins separating the two sides. As Bronze works it back to uh, Ellie Roebuck, who hasn't had a save to make in the first half so far. Just one real half chance for Birmingham when Claudia Walker was in behind. She got the wrong side of the Manchester City defence, pulled the ball across, but was lacking support. Here's Bronze. Greenwood, Walsh, looking for uh, Weir, and that's uh, shepherded behind and out by Emma Kelly. In decent game back there, Emma Kelly for Birmingham City as the player of the year during a spell in Iceland. 
24 year old tough task for her and her teammates out there this afternoon and Kelly on a hat-trick shooting opportunity not yet wanted to get the match ball and she wanted to get it early yeah I don't blame her for having a shot there you know she's known for cutting in and you know she's got a great strike on her so either for so she's you know she's known for cutting in and, and some scoring some you know some fantastic goals this time she just uh, got the better of Rebecca Holloway like just got underneath that one you sense that she will be hungry to try and get her hands on that match ball though at some stage this afternoon Five minutes ago in this first half, Birmingham have kept it to Manchester City with all the possession. Weir looks for Hemp for all their possession, and they have admittedly scored two goals. They haven't exactly tested Hannah Hampton on too many occasions. That first, first save in the opening 20 seconds, and then Chloe Kelly's couple of goals. But other than that, Birmingham have done well to keep the majority of the play outside of the uh, area. Yeah, I mean, it's been a real dogged performance by Birmingham, uh, you know, since the first two goals went in. You know, they've kind of frustrated Man City and they've limited them to a lot of, you know, chances. They, You know, they're starting to have shots from outside the box now, which you didn't see in the, you know, in the first kind of 20 minutes. Um, so they're limiting them to, you know, limited chances and stuff. So, you know, I think they'll be happy with, you know, how the rest of the half has gone. Um, I just think they'll be really disappointed with conceding so early and giving themselves such a mountain to climb. And the decision will be in the second half, I guess, is exactly when to commit more shirts forward, when to push a little bit more. There's an option now with a set piece to try and put Ellie Roebuck's goal under some pressure for the first real time in this match. Manchester City defence have to get organised. Uh, it's not cleared by Manchester City. It falls kindly for uh, Ellie Roebuck, who is able to collect. With games like this for Man City, you know, they have to concentrate in them, their big moments, their key moments in the game. And with, with Birmingham being, you know, really really good on set pieces and a real physical team, you know, you have to really concentrate and, you know, make sure they don't, you know, let in any silly goals now for the, you know, the next bit. It was uh, Emily Murphy on loan from Chelsea who was at the far post, just trying to cause a few issues. Bronze yeah. gives chase, but won't be able to keep that one in. I'm not sure if you've seen, Paul, but uh, Emily Murphy's now gone up top on her own and Claudia Walker seems to have dropped down onto the, the left wing. I don't know whether that's a tactic that they've kind of used to maybe use Claudia Walker's work rate down that side to kind of stop the, the whole Chloe Kelly, Lucy Bronze situation down the right side there. White to Walsh. Weir has hemp to her left hand side. Just can't dig the ball out from underneath her feet. Stanway. And here is hemp. Just asked a bit too much of Walsh, who again thought about pulling the trigger, elected not to, and found bronze instead. Space for bronze to cut into. Taken from her toes, but given as far as Coombs and City come again. Walsh. Again, Hemp in space over on that flank, that left hand side. Stanway to Walsh. Will Wall shoot this time? Elected to try and feed it through for Weir, but it was cut out. Bronze. Manchester City looking to finish the half with a flourish, just like they started it with. Walsh. Weir. It opens up. We're still going. That's a 
good foot in, another good tackle by Napier. And it's recycled well by the home side. Hemp, that drop of the shoulder once again, that injection of pace. This time she's checked back. Coombs. Bronze. Hemp at the far post. Weir. That's cut out by Kelly. But Birmingham just can't get out of their half. It's been the story of the first 45 minutes. Walsh. Hemp. Stanway. Well, there'll be one last chance at the end of this 45 for Manchester City. Bronze. Weir. Hemp. Stanway. Well, he's trying to get on the end of it. Stanway does pick it up. Birmingham almost playing themselves into trouble. Eventually they get the ball clear. But there's just no outlet. And the thing with Man City, they make it so hard for you to secure the ball. You can win the ball back and, you know, you think you're in a bit of comfortable possession, but, you know, they just surround you in numbers and, you, you know, you can't get out. So I think, you know, for, for Birmingham, they've got to find somewhere to clear it, a, a better area to kind of hit. Here is Walsh. Stanway. Hemp. Again, down that left-hand side, running at Kelly. That's another good tackle by Kelly, and that's a goal kick. Really good play by Emma Kelly once again at the back there for Birmingham. half for Manchester City then they are keeping their end of the bargain they are keeping this WSL title race alive Chloe Kelly with both the goals two tap-ins from within inside the six yard area both of them assisted by Lauren Hemp Manchester City's foursome trio causing problems for Birmingham who haven't really created any chances of their own but half time at the Academy Stadium it is Manchester City 2 Birmingham City nil So half time then it's Manchester City leading Birmingham City by two goals nil. Becky Spencer is alongside me and watched that first 45. And Becky, in many ways, it played out exactly how we thought it would. Yeah, um, you know, with Man City being so dominant and it's such an important game for them to keep applying the pressure, you know, applying the pressure to, to Chelsea. I know obviously Chelsea have got a game in hand, but you know, they've you know they've got a fight for every single game. And yeah, they've been comfortable in possession. Uh, they've not allowed any space for, for Birmingham to, to kind of play out. Let's just take a look at the goals again. And Lauren Hemp, the provider, and, and Chloe Kelly on the spot. Yeah, I mean, they'll be disappointed with that goal. I mean, Hannah Hampton's done her job there, and she's going to want her defenders to kind of help her out a little bit with that. And then the second goal came in the 23rd minute, and it was, it was really similar. Again, Hemp down the left-hand side, and again, Kelly in the right place at the right time. Yeah, they make it so hard to track players, like I said, and there's just so many options to kind of play. And if you don't clear your lines properly or mark or, you know, just check your shoulders and be in a good position to actually attack the ball, it just makes it a nightmare. And, you know, poor Hannah Hampton had no chance with that. So we will uh, keep you up to date with all the other scores uh, going on in the WSL and how it affects the uh, the title race and the battle at the bottom. We'll bring you those scores in a moment, but in case you missed it earlier, Aston Villa took on West Ham. That was a crucial clash at Villa Park. Barker's big knot side going into the game, just one point clear of bottom of the table, Bristol City. How did this one pan out? Let's find out with your commentator, Chris Sharples. The Hammers failed to score in the last three league games. They've never gone four WSL games without scoring. Here is Maz Pacheco, who sets it back in. A 
as it's played it. It's headed back across and it's put wide. Larson, if she can see where the ball is. At the end, it's good goalkeeping. As Thomas comes forward now. Oh, and Brynjus to here, good block. Oh, surely it's to be a goal here. And it's wide and the flag's up anyway. Aston Villa have failed to score in 11 games in the WSL this season. Well, they might just be in here with Hales. Big chance, and she's denied. Not just once, but twice. What can West Ham United provide here? Side netting. Now Jilly Flaherty. Kenza Dali. Great play from Dali. Still she goes on. The save from Vice. Dali's there again. Oh, what a scramble it is. Van Eggman, good block. And Pacheco. As Thomas is in, it's Marta Thomas off the frame of the goal. And she's there again, bravely, the goalkeeper. He goes quickly for Longhurst now. And kept in play, Thomas in the centre. It's in towards her, and that's well claimed by Elisa Weiss. Thomas again has led the line so well for West Ham today. Dali, Kenza Dali, and Doe in the way. Van Egmond for Dali. Oh, how close was that? And he comes from Dali. And then Flaherty off the line to deny Jilly Flaherty. Van Eggman, oh, they've hit the woodwork again. They are living on the edge, Villa. It's finished here at Villa Park. Aston Villa nil, West Ham United nil. I thought we were immense today, and especially our keeper. Um, what a performance she put in, in terms of commanding her box and, and really demonstrating. Happy with, with a lot of moments. There were moments in that game I'm not happy with. Um, but overall, um, we deserved the point, but I thought we... We took a point, but we deserve more, to be honest. So a point then for uh, Aston Villa in their battle to avoid relegation. Becky Spencer's alongside me, Paul Scott, and, and that point, it, it might be enough for Villa, but they're very they're much very still, 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 still at the bottom. We'll get the thoughts of uh, Becky Spencer as uh, the half progresses. Let's just uh, bring you up to date with what else is happening today because the game between Everton and Arsenal has uh, concluded. That was an earlier kickoff. Let's just see what happened here because it was Arsenal who ran out 2 1 winners. This was uh, the opening goal that came from uh, Katie McCabe. Everton were able to. Uh, Pull one back though, Megan Finnegan leveled. But what about this? In the 94th minute, it was uh, a penalty. McKay brought down by Finnegan, the two goal scorers combining, and Kim Little converting a beautiful penalty to mean it finished Everton 1, Arsenal 2. And that all but secures Champions League football next season for Arsenal because. Manchester United, although they are victorious, they've beaten Bristol City by a goal to nil. It was an own goal from Jana Daniel securing the victory for Manchester United. So it finished Everton 1, Arsenal 2, Bristol City nil, Manchester United 1. And that means that Arsenal, barring a ridiculous goal swing uh, next weekend, will be playing Champions League football.
So this is the table as it stands then. Manchester City leading uh, at half-time against Birmingham. We'll bring you the second half in a few minutes' time. Chelsea, though they have that game in hand, they secured their place in the Champions League final earlier today. They are two games away from claiming the WSL title. So, plenty more to come on BBC over the next week or so. You've got the World Snooker Championship Finals. Uh, that's tomorrow on BBC Two at 1pm. Listen to all the goals as they go in on five live final scorers. Manchester City take on Paris Saint-Germain in the semi-finals of the Men's Champions League. That is available on the BBC iPlayer on Tuesday from 7pm. And to hear the biggest names in women's football, subscribe to the Players Podcast. It's available now on BBC Sounds and it's the penultimate women's football show of the season. That's tonight on BBC One at 11.35. It's going to be presented by Reshman Chowdhury alongside the uh, former Wales women manager Jane Ludlow and we can uh, join both Reshman and Jane in a few minutes time we're hearing that the sprinklers are, uh, are getting the guys wet let's cross to them now will I be introduced Hello there, we're at the Academy Stadium with Jane Ludlow. We are being attacked by sprinklers. It's not raining in Manchester. Um, Jane, look, Manchester City taking the lead, as you would expect. Chloe Kelly, what a performance from her. She's up for Player of the Year this season. Yeah, and look, today's performance highlights why. I think she's had a fantastic season. Obviously, there's a lot more to come for her over the, over the next few years, hopefully. But I think, look, today has highlighted why she's on those lists. You know, in front of goal, fantastic, but actually creates goals as well. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of other results as well. Aston Villa against West Ham finished goalless, much like the last time they played, which was about, what, 12 days ago. Um, and this one was at Villa Park, so you'd hope for a bit of a spectacle, but it just means it remains so tight at the bottom of the table, doesn't it? Well, look, the positive for those both clubs is they are picking up points now over the last few games but obviously it, for Bristol it's still a bit of a struggle isn't it so they, they're still keeping that gap yeah. but it's still very tight down the bottom it is and Birmingham City of course well and truly in it as well so these are four clubs that are all in that kind of tight space it's looking so what's the word it's so uh, precarious yeah, I think it's exciting, you know, if, if you're a fan, uh, obviously if you're a fan of a certain club, it might not be as exciting right now, <laughs> but you know, if you're a neutral, it is exciting, you know, there's, there's things to play for at the top and at the bottom, which yeah. is great. Yeah, absolutely. Look, the race for Champions League football is on between Arsenal and Manchester United. Both of them won today, but it looks like Arsenal finally are back in the competition that they love because barring a... 26 goal swing on the final day which is not going to happen it is arsenal's now isn't it that final third spot that's so precious yeah i'd imagine so and look great for the old club to to be back where they want to be you know season in season out and it's been a while but look good luck to them um it's been an interesting season for them i'm sure they'd want to finish higher but still it's a positive from the year yeah absolutely well look the title race is obviously what it is we've got manchester city who could go top today chelsea not playing until midweek but wow, what an injury times of final three minutes in that Champions League game. They have beaten Bayern Munich. They are playing Barcelona in their first ever Champions League final. How huge is that for Emma Hayes? How huge is it for English football? No, I think it's huge on all levels because, you know, the, the level that we're talking about, the top, top, top level of the game is fantastic to have uh, an English club in there. Obviously, no Emma personally, really pleased for her. It's been a long time coming in a sense of, you know, she's wanted to get back there. Because remember, she was our coach in 2007 when we won it. But obviously, it's going to feel completely different to her now being the number one, being the manager and get into that final is superb. Yeah, and actually for... The work that she has done, you know, the way that she has built this team and where they are now, just for the status of a side like Chelsea to be there at the moment, you kind of feel like it's all coming together for them at the moment, don't you? With it, compared to past seasons, that this is the season where, with the bigger players coming in, they now play every game on the front foot and they've got every confidence going into that tie against Barcelona. Well, look, it's, it's been a long project for Emma. I'm sure she would say that, you know, it's been about adding those pieces year after year after year. And, just, you know, she has collected some fantastic players over the last few years. And, you know, they've been built into something. And it's obviously a, a, an occasion like this. And um, she'll be hoping they can go and pick up that trophy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Manchester City are obviously uh, going to kick off their second half in a moment. I can't let you go without asking you about your new role. The last time you were with us, 
You, you were wondering when you could, you were itching to get back to it. You are now the technical director of the Girls Academy. Just tell me a little bit about your role and how excited you are to be yeah, back in the game. Look, I'm, I'm ultra excited. And like I said earlier, it's lovely to not be called the former something, something now, to be fair. Um, no, really excited to come and work with youngsters. It's always been a passion of mine. Obviously, every role I've had since ending my playing career has involved both seniors, the first team and the youth. And now I can solely focus on the youth system and hopefully over the next few years bring through some fantastic players um, to come and grace this field in the future hopefully and what a club to do it up look it, it, it's it's my, all my dreams come true I think you know um, I'm as excited now as I probably was when I first stepped into the top level of the game as a player many years ago you know it's a fantastic opportunity for myself and my family as well so really looking forward to getting to know everybody and getting to know the players first and foremost oh that's wonderful to hear good luck to you Jane and back to you guys Half-time then at the Academy Stadium. It is Manchester City 2, Birmingham City 0. As it stands, Manchester City will be moving to the top of the Barclays WSL table. They will be one point ahead of Chelsea with a game to go. But Chelsea will have two games to play. So Emma Hayes' side know that if they win their final two matches, they will be crowned champions no matter what Manchester City do. It was a comfortable first 45 minutes of football in this one against Birmingham City, who know that a defeat here will mean that they uh, have the threat of relegation hanging over them. But uh, with their superior goal difference means that uh, they could be all but safe going into the uh, final round of fixtures. Chloe Kelly with a brace in the first half. She scored the opener in the 10th minute and then doubled her tally and Manchester City's in the 23rd. Tottenham goalkeeper Becky Spencer watched the first 45 minutes of football alongside me. And Becky, when or if do you expect Birmingham to sort of be show more in the second half and, and come out and try and get themselves back into this? I mean, it's a really difficult, you know, situation to be in. I feel as though now, you know, they've defended resolutely. Um, obviously, they've conceded two goals, but, you know, like you said, if and when are they going to start maybe committing a few more players going forward? But it's, it's really difficult because you do that and you leave yourself really vulnerable and, you know, just wide open to more Man City goals. And a quick word about some of the other score lines that we just uh, saw at half time. Victories for both Arsenal, a 94th minute winning penalty for their Manchester United one as well. But with that superior goal difference, it's Champions League football almost certainly for Arsenal next season. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're back kind of where they belong in, in the Champions League. You know, they've had a, I think they had a season out of it. And, you know, it's important that, you know, for the club and, you know, for, for it being such a big name, you know, and, you know, the standards that they hold, you know, they need to be back in Champions League football. I appreciate for a Tottenham goalkeeper to say that's where uh, Arsenal belong might be quite, uh, quite difficult. Uh, and at the, the foot of the table, a point for Aston Villa. Bristol City will be bottom with 12 points and a, a far inferior goal difference. Aston Villa on 14 points and Birmingham 15. So with that goal difference, really, uh, it's mathematically an improbability, almost a certainty, that uh, Birmingham will survive and secure top flight football ahead of next season. That is, of course, pending any decision from the FA as to regards as to what punishment they will hand out to Birmingham, if any, after they were charged for fielding Russia Little John against Reading last week when she should have been suspended. That could put the cat amongst the pigeons at the bottom of the WSL table. We'll find out more on Tuesday, which is when the deadline expires for Birmingham to appeal to the FA. It does mean, with uh, Champions League all but secured and relegation all but settled, that the only thing to decide is who will win the title. Manchester City moving top at the moment with a victory here. Chelsea, though, they know it's theirs to lose. Chelsea taking on Tottenham in midweek. Might ask Becky about that a little bit later on. 
but no changes, I don't believe, for either side at half time. It will be Manchester City in their uh, familiar home kit, Sky Blue, shooting away to the left hand side. Birmingham in their change kit of red, shooting away to the right hand side. And Chloe Kelly's brace in the first half, separating the two sides. And Becky, I, I expect perhaps in the opening exchanges of this second half, more of the same, really. Yeah, um, I'm not quite sure, but I feel as though maybe Birmingham have gone to a four at the back, um, which is, you know, it's a positive for them. So it looks like they can kind of commit more players going forward. But like I said, you know, it's just going to leave them with more space. But like, as I said now, look, they've got more comfortable possession, you know, but they just get crowded out, you know, it's just uh, so isolated as they get forward. So, yeah. And they've already released hemp, have Manchester City. We've got the two assists in the first half. Here is Weir. Weir feeds it through for Kelly. Kelly with the chance to cross. It's a miss kick from White. Recycled. Walsh. Bronze. White still lurking on the edge of the six-yard area. Coombs can't get on the end of that one, and it's uh, cleared by Ruby Mace for Birmingham, only as far as Morgan. Across to Greenwood. An early opportunity at the start of the second half for Manchester City, just like they created in the first. Here's Hemp again. Stanway to Walsh. Bronze. White. And that's going to be cleared by uh, Birmingham. Walker giving chase once and once again. Manchester City won the reverse fixture in February at St George's Park by four goals to nil. Sam Mewis scoring twice on that day. We're in Hemp also on target. Here's Chloe Kelly on a hat trick. Well, it was weird who's been brought down and that's going to be a free kick to Manchester City in a really dangerous position yeah I think uh, we're their set piece specialist and you know it's totally in range for you know what you can score and she you know she's brilliant at them so this is a really really you know close range free kick and a uh, Hannah Hampton's gonna have to be on her game for this one well she won the free kick herself Caroline Weir and it looks like she's set to take it as well. Scored eight times in the WSL already this season. She was nominated for the uh, Pushkas Award for a goal against Manchester United last year. So we know that she can score the spectacular. Lucy Bronze just uh, helping, assisting Emily Heaslip and ensuring that the wall is 10 yards. Oh. Oh. Stanway is there as well, but it looks like it will be left for Weir. Up steps Caroline Weir, and it sails over the bar. All that build up and harmlessly sailing over the bar in the end. Yeah, I think Hannah Hampton will be happy to see that shot sail over the bar there. You know, the wall did their job, you know, they stood tall on, you know, on their toes and yeah, she'll be so happy to see that go over the bar. Well, Manchester City's next two fixtures are both against West Ham. They uh, are away at West Ham next weekend in the final round of matches in the WSL. And then the following weekend, they are at home here at the Academy Stadium against West Ham in the FA Cup. Chelsea, of course, also still in the FA Cup, still on for the quadruple. And Becky Spencer, you wouldn't necessarily 
bet against them. They're in the final now of the Champions League, as we mentioned, Chelsea. They're in the FA Cup. They've already secured the League Cup. And if they win their remaining two matches, they'll be WSL champions as well. Yeah, I mean, I know Emma Hayes really well, you know, from my time at from my time at Chelsea and my time at Arsenal. And, you know, she's such a resilient manager. She's disciplined, she's organised. She's got so many new ideas. Um, you know, nothing is beyond them when it comes to the quadruple. Here is uh, Chloe Kelly. Bronze just trying to give chase, but Holloway will snuff out the trouble. Stanway. Hemp, and this is where not just uh, the, the mental concentration that Birmingham have had to focus on but the the physical attributes as well will start to tell throughout the course of the second half with Manchester City just keeping the ball passing it around it's a real test of uh, mental and physical stamina yeah for sure you know physically it's going to be very taxing on them them Birmingham players and you know they just have to you know concentrate and I think communication is going to be a big part of this game now I think they need to keep each other concentrated throughout and you know making sure everyone knows what their jobs are and they don't have too many options, as we mentioned, on the bench either. Just four substitutes to call upon for Carla Ward. So the players that are out there know that uh, there aren't too many options to call upon. And they have another set piece to try and defend here. Floated in as a dangerous one underneath the uh, crossbar. Hampton comes and collects it the second time of asking. Gets a little bit of a a knee for her troubles as well. Yeah, she's you know she's done really well. They're under pressure. You know them high balls sometimes are difficult for goalkeepers, especially when you've got a lot of bodies in and around you. You know, no Man City player was really near her, so she could you know catch the ball cleanly. But you know them high balls are quite difficult to contend with sometimes. It's only 20, Hannah Hampton. Sophie Whitehouse is on the bench for uh, Birmingham City, signed in January, the backup goalkeeper. Again, a raking ball, looking for uh, Weir in behind. That's a corner. The last touch coming off Brougham. And Hannah Hampton has to organise her defence once more. Yeah, that was a really important header by Brougham. I mean, uh, Ellen White was lurking just behind her, so just a little touch like that was so important. Greenwood to take. A floated one towards the far post. It's another corner for Manchester City. Last touch off a red shirt. Esme Morgan yet to score this season. The young defender up from the back for Manchester City. Bronze with the header. Morgan tries to give chase but can't get there. And this is where Birmingham need to make their opportunities count. They don't get too many chances to launch a counter-attack, but that is a brilliant foot in by Caroline Weir. And Manchester City have won the ball back. Yeah, I mean, it was a good run by Emily Murphy, but I think, you know, it's just decision-making on the ball, you know, whether you can beat a player or, you know, whether you can just hold it up. I think for, for Birmingham, they need to hold the ball up like Claudia Walker was doing beforehand, and just to invite and just to bring players in, just to help you out a little bit. Stanway. Walsh and Weir combining. One back by Stanway again. That's a good foot in by Christy Murray. 
Bronze picks up the second ball. Here is Walsh. Kelly's pulled out wide to the right-hand side. Ellen White lurking on the edge of the area. Stanway. Stanway again. Coombs to Kelly. Kelly has bronze in front of her. Cuts in field, looking for White. And that's uh, well defended by Birmingham. But again, no real outlet. And Manchester City will come once more. Walsh. Coombs to bronze. So the first change of the match, and it's Emily Murphy who makes way. Molly Green coming on. Molly Green, the former Liverpool, Everton, Manchester United and Sheffield United midfielder. Replacing Emily Murphy, the Chelsea Loney, and the first change of the afternoon is for Carla Ward's side. Yeah, I think it was very much needed. Emily Murphy's been working her socks off and you could kind of tell, you know, with some of the passes that she started to play, she looked tired and, you know, her decision-making started to, to go off a little bit. So I think with Molly Green coming on, it'll give just fresh legs and a bit more, uh, deci better decision-making. Bronze. The second half has started as we expected it might. Key ball for Manchester City. It's a real test out there for these Birmingham players. Test of concentration as much as anything else. Discipline. It's a raking ball asking uh, too much of Hemp. And Brougham shepherds it behind. Carla Ward can still call upon Viatriki Sari, the Greek forward who came off the bench against Aston Villa in midweek, making her WSL debut for Birmingham and scoring in the 96th minute to ensure Carla Ward's side came away with a point. And when you look at the league table now, what a crucial point it was as well. So Sari is an option off the bench. Oh, and Hemp has uh, taken the full force of that one. That's going to wind you. A clearance from Emma Kelly. Hemp is OK to continue. Not too many numbers on the Birmingham bench. I was going to say, it's not a great sign when one of your, you know, your subs have put a pack of ice on their thigh already before even going onto the pitch. Is bronze for Manchester City. Down the line for Chloe Kelly. Kelly on a hat trick. Bronze to Walsh. Again, Manchester City prodding, probing, asking questions. Birmingham so far standing firm in this second half. Here is Walsh. Coombs to Kelly. Holloway blocks. Oh, 
it's just relentless, isn't it, from Birmingham's point of view. Hemp trying to get in behind. No whistle. Hemp with the cross. It's a dangerous one. Looking for White. Walsh. Bronze thinks about the shot. Kelly with a chance to cross. She does. Looking for White. Deflected behind for a corner of Christy Murray. I didn't want to speak too soon, but I was going to say, you know, Carla Ward must be, you know, she's probably really pleased with how, how Birmingham have defended in the second half. I mean, they've really limited them to, like I said, shots outside the box and they haven't had much clear-cut chances. So I think they'll be happy with how they've started this half. Bren's uh, bronze sold the dummy. Kelly's cross was blocked. Whipped in dangerously towards the far post. That's a good header. That wasn't far away. Esme Morgan. The corner count racking up now for Manchester City. Greenwood takes this one. Birmingham getting themselves into position once again. These two banks of four. Weir. Morgan. Picked up by Weir. Stanway. They're just so comfortable in possession, Manchester City. Confidence in their own abilities as Walsh puts it in, looking for White. It's just the constant ball speed of Man City as well. You know, they play off one or two touches. They make great decisions on the ball. There's always movement. There's always someone to pass it to. And, you know, I think, you know, Birmingham have done a, a really, really good job, you know, especially centrally. You know, but, um, Man City haven't managed to break them down or carve them open through the centre. Um, and you can kind of tell that, which is why they're, you know, starting to limit them, limit their chances. So I think in the midfield, Birmingham have done really, really well. Well, Birmingham last won at Manchester City in the WSL in 2014. Seven years without a victory in this fixture. Manchester City have got five wins in a row against Birmingham with an aggregate score of 13 to 2 as well. For Carla Ward looking on. She'll be pleased with what her side have shown in this second half. We're Hemp. White lurking, making the run to the near post. It's Scott who puts it behind. Harriet Scott behind for a corner. Yeah, I mean, it was brilliant defending by Harriet Scott. I think they've defended that near post space much better than the first half, um, which is why, you know, they haven't had any clear cut opportunities or any kind of pullbacks or any space to, to play in there. There have been a number of corners to defend, though, and here's another one. And again, cleared at the near post by Birmingham. Shooting opportunity comes in from distance, not far away. Well, it was a uh, good footwork by Georgia Stanway, created space onto her left foot. Just again, got underneath it slightly. But once again, Becky, it's a shot from distance, and that'll be, I suppose, pleasing from Birmingham's point of view. Yeah, it's, it's, they're keeping the play in front of them. I think that's Georgia Stanway's second one now. She's getting closer with each attempt, so, you know, I think they need to start, you know, maybe getting out to the ball a little bit quicker now. But, yeah, they'll be happy with that, Birmingham. Kelly in behind. She's on a hat-trick. Chloe Kelly thinking about going alone. She goes to ground. Is that a penalty? The referee says yes. Well, Chloe Kelly was in behind. She looks to be in some discomfort as well. She looks like she's in 
serious pain here, Chloe Kelly. She was in behind, running the wrong side of Holloway. There was a collision there. Holloway pleading her ignorance, but almost looks as if perhaps Chloe Kelly... Was it a collision of knees? Yeah, it looks like a clash of knees there. Um, and that's a you know, really painful one. Obviously, you, know, you don't want to see any player down hurt like that, but hopefully it's not as serious as it actually looks. Or Chloe Kelly, whose two goals separate the two sides. She got the opening goal after 10 minutes. That was a tap in after good work by Lauren Hemp. And then she got the second 13 minutes later. Another tap in from inside the six yard area. She is on a hat trick. She was bearing down on goal there, thought that was her opportunity. Gareth Taylor will not want to see this in the final couple of matches coming up. Let's take a look at uh, Chloe Kelly's goals then in the first half. And this was the first one, Hampton with the save, and Kelly was on the right spot at the right time. And then uh, 13 minutes later, there was the second, very, very similar goals. Yeah, they're almost a carbon copy of each other. And, you know, Chloe Kelly's been incredible this season. And, you know, she's been incredible in this game. Um, and that was the right decision, what she'd done there, you know, to, to kind of come back out for the penalty. But, you know, I just hope that the injury is not as, as bad as it seems. And there will be a change for Gareth Taylor's side. It's Janine Becky, who's set to come on for Manchester City. But all the concern and all the focus here is on uh, Chloe Kelly. The 23-year-old signed from Everton. Nominated only this week as a potential WSL player of the season. Alan Marne and Gareth Taylor. Concern etched across their face. There's another injured Manchester City player, of course, Steph Horton, who's set to miss the remainder of the WSL season. And, of course, that game against West Ham in the FA Cup coming up as well. It's not the end to the season that Gareth Taylor would have wanted. A couple of his key players out injured. And now Chloe Kelly looking in some discomfort. And, Becky, you're a player you've been out there you can see the concern not just of course of her teammates her fellow Manchester City players but the Birmingham players as well are going to be affected by this yeah I mean it's horrible you know you, you you're competitive and you play and you, you know every, both sides obviously want to win the game but you know when a, a, a fellow competitor or a teammate goes down injured obviously the concern is you know all for them and you don't want to ever see anyone get a serious injury at any point in, in their career because it's such a difficult thing to come back from and you know, by the looks of it, you know, she's up, sitting up right now. So, you know, she looks like she's not in too much pain. So hopefully she can, uh, in, at this point as well, with them being 2-0 up, maybe it's time to take her off and, you know, just protect her a little bit. Well, it will be when Chloe Kelly, I mean, she, she seems to know that it might be serious, or at least it's causing a great deal of pain it will be a penalty when play does resume and Kelly on a hat trick in a more fortunate circumstances would have fancied her chances of taking it and, and completing the hat trick but That doesn't look likely. She is back sat up, though, which is a, is a promising sign. And the physio uh, was moving that right leg a few moments ago, but you can see there's support on it now. 
She's got um, great teammates around her who've been through, you know, injuries and they can support her all the way. So, she, you know, she's in, she's in really, really good hands at Man City. And I know Steph Houghton and, and players like Ellen White, Aoife Mannion, they've been through injuries themselves where they can really, you know, support her and help her out. But I'm hoping, you know, this is not as serious as it looks and, you know, she could be back on the pitch playing as soon as possible. Well, Janine Becky is likely to be the player who will come on for Chloe Kelly. Janine Becky, born in the USA, but to Canadian parents, represents Canada. Brother Drew actually plays in uh, the USL as well, which is the second tier of men's football over in the USA. Well, it's not the sight that Manchester City would have wanted. Chloe Kelly, whose afternoon started so brightly with two goals in the first half, ends in concerning fashion. She will be stretched off with 20 minutes still to play at the Academy Stadium. It will be Becky, Janine Becky, who will replace her. Well, you can only hope that it is not as serious as it first seemed. Chloe Kelly was in real pain when she went down to the turf after winning a penalty for Manchester City. Her afternoon ends prematurely. Janine Becky comes on to the field of play. And after all of that, there will be a penalty for Manchester City. And it's a chance for the home side to go three goals to the good. It is a weird, and it's saved by Hampton. Hannah Hampton at full stretch keeps it to two. That was a fantastic save down to Hannah Hampton's right. I mean, she pushed it away as well. So a great, a great save by Hannah. And, you know, hopefully that gives them a bit of confidence now they can grow into this game. Well, it was well tele telegraphed. We're with the... Uh, penalty Hampton guessed correctly and not just guessed correctly but was able to reach it as well Stanway here is uh, Weir who missed that penalty another opportunity now perhaps for Manchester City towards Coombs Hemp is there Esme Morgan has remained forward up from the back as well well a disappointing couple of minutes for Manchester City in more ways than one They've lost Chloe Kelly to injury and missed the resulting penalty as well. They are still two goals to the good, but Hannah Hampton, the 20-year-old goalkeeper, with a superb save. Yeah, it came at a really important time as well, that penalty save. You know, when you go 3-0 down, it's almost, you know, in, almost impossible to come back from. So 2-0, they're still within the chance. If they get a goal back, you never know what could happen. Here is bronze. And Manchester City will have to go again after that... Uh, long break in play Walsh to bronze and there is a shooting opportunity for White who hooks it just wide Well, it was White who just hooked the volley wide. And well, Rose Lavelle is about to uh, enter the field of play for Gareth Taylor's side. It looks like Manchester City will make a double change. Hemp for Manchester City. 
still two goals to the good. 15 minutes to play plus stoppage time. Here's Weir, who had that penalty saved a few moments ago. Stanway. That's a good tackle. Emma Kelly, once again, perfectly timed. Yeah, she's been really impressive, Emma Kelly. I think she's grown into the game and she's made some vital tackles down that, down that right side there. Um, she's been really important to them. Another corner for Manchester City. Another corner for Alex Greenwood to come over to take. Hampton comes and doesn't collect and it's ricocheting inside the six-yard area. Here is Janine Becky, the substitute. First real touch for the Canadian. Wins a corner. They've taken it quickly, they've taken it short, trying to catch Birmingham off guard. White and Hemp trying to combine. Walsh, White, Hemp in behind, across the face of goal, and it's still alive. Claims of handball not given, and Birmingham survive once again. Here's Walsh. Weir. Weir looking to make amends. Another save by Hampton. Yeah, that was an incredible save by Hampton to her left side there. Close range, she had to wrap really quickly, and the area she pushed it into was, in, it was really good as well. Manchester City still with possession. Weir once again, this time it's deflected and behind for another corner kick. And Caroline Weir will not want to see too much more of Hannah Hampton, that's for sure, this afternoon. Weir missed the penalty a few moments ago. Hampton saved and then she thought she had the opportunity to make amends. But once again, Hampton was equal to it. As Manchester City make a change with Coombs coming off. Laura Coombs makes way to be replaced by Sam Mewis. I think if you're a Birmingham player now, this is the last thing you kind of want to see. But, you know, from a Man City perspective, I feel like it's going to be a little bit flat for them. Um, so I think these fresh legs coming on will, you know, will help them pick up the momentum again. The American duo on for Manchester City. It's towards the far post. Let's just take a look, shall we, at uh, Hannah Hampton's recent exploits. And this is the first save a few moments ago, Becky. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, like you said, it was telegraphed by Caroline Weir. Um, I think she'll be a bit disappointed about the way she kind of went about that. But, you know, nonetheless, I can't take, take away the save from Hannah Hampton. She had to go the right way, and she made a really, really good save there. And as you say, Becky, it does just give Birmingham that glimmer of hope that they can get something from this match. Yeah, especially when your keeper's having a really good game, you know, they're keeping her, she's doing her job and she's, you know, holding up her end of the bargain. So now she's got to look to her strikers and the rest of her team to kind of, you know, help, you know, up the other end now. Well, she was your one to watch before the match. A fine display so far from Hannah Hampton. It means that as we enter the final 10 minutes, Birmingham have kept it to two, and they do have a glimmer of hope of taking something from this match. Hemp. Stanway. Morgan. The thing is, Birmingham haven't really had a sniff of an opportunity at the other end. Not even a set piece, really, to, to try and put Manchester City under pressure. Yeah, I don't think Ellie Roebuck has... I don't know if she's even touched the ball this half. Um, I can't remember, you know, kind of even seeing her in shot. So, yeah, it's been a really difficult afternoon for Birmingham. 
Hemp will give chase, but once again, Hampton gets there. Well, a tale of two keepers, Hannah Hampton with a penalty save and a fine couple of stops to keep Manchester City at two. Ali Roebuck at the other end, merely a spectator. Now is another opportunity for Manchester City to possibly put this game to bed. It's Hampton saving once again. It was Janine Becky in behind, but she shot straight at the 20-year-old and Hannah Hampton once again, keeping City at bay. It was straight at her from Janine Becky, but still. Hampton proving to be a brick wall at the moment. Manchester City can't find a way through. Is that going to be a free kick? Claims of a flailing arm. It goes the way of Manchester City. Yeah, I mean, Hampton will be happy with that save. A save's a save at the end of the day. And, you know, she stood her ground well. And, you know, Janine Becky looked up and probably couldn't see any kind of angle or any kind of space to exploit. So she's done her job there again, Hannah Hampton. Well, this is the collision between Stanway and uh, Napier. So just a bit of a flailing loose arm. Checking for signs of, of blood. Jamie Lee Napier. Another Birmingham player on loan from Chelsea. Another set piece for Manchester City. Greenwood floats it in, and that's not far away. Well, it was floated in by Greenwood. Manchester City shirts queuing up at the far post. Couldn't direct it goalwards. We've got eight minutes to play, but we will have, of course, a lot of stoppage time at the end of this uh, this match. That victory to Chloe Kelly midway through the second half means that we will uh, will go well beyond our allotted 90 minutes as City come forward again, looking for Weir, Napier. Walsh to bronze. Stanway. Lauren Hemp. Stanway again. Stands the ball up. And it's going to be Weir with the shot and Hampton with the save. She's having an inspired game. I mean, I said she was going to be busy from the, you know, from the word go. And, you know, she stayed alert. She stayed, you know, up for it. And she's, she's made some vital saves. And I, like I said, you know, the Birmingham City players need to kind of stand up and help her out a bit now. I don't think they're doing enough in front of her. Yeah, the shots are beginning to tally up now, aren't they? They're raining in on Hannah Hampton's goal. And so is the corner count. Here's another one. Not dealt with, and there's an opportunity, and this one has found a way through, and Manchester City have got a third. Hannah Hampton has been beaten in this second half. It was a set piece that undid Birmingham, and Manchester City will be home and dry now. They lead by three goals to nil. Yeah, as a goalkeeper, I mean, you're just so, you know, disheartened when, when that happens. You make an excellent save, and the resulting corner then ends up in the back of your net, and... No one's marking again. They're not doing enough. Um, she's managed to run off of someone, and you know she's literally got a you know a free strike in the middle of the goal. Um, so on Birmingham's perspective, it's not going to be good enough. It was Esme Morgan, the young defender for Manchester City, getting her first WSL goal of the season. The defender up from the back on hand to make it three 0 
Here's Janine Becky. And those substitutes for Manchester City causing problems. This time it was Sam Mewis. Hampton puts it behind for another corner. Those substitutes for Manchester City, they've just added some extra energy, haven't they? Up the tempo and City coming again. Yeah, they've come on and, you know, they're fresh legs and, you know, they're not, you know, they're not youngsters. They're, they're well experienced players who, you know, USA internationals. And like I said, when you're a Birmingham player and you've been such a dogged performance and you're physically knackered and you're mentally knackered, that's the last thing that you would want to see, you know, coming off the Man City bench. And like I said, Man City started to get a little bit flat, you know, just after the Chloe Kelly injury. So bringing them two in and introducing them to the game has been a, has really paid off for, for Man City. Even though they've looked comfortable throughout, it's just maybe inject a little bit more energy and they look a bit more enthusiastic again now. Well, it was Claudia Walker taking a knock through Sam Mewis as Lauren Hemp makes way for Manchester City. <laughs> Jessica Park coming on. As uh, Becky, we ask you for your, your player of the match as we enter the final four minutes. Yeah, um, I've gone for Lauren Hemp. I think she's, you know, given the defenders an absolute nightmare this afternoon. Obviously, they started to defend her a little bit better, but you know, the damage was already done in the first, you know, in the first half and the first 20 minutes when she, you know, she, she's she's so good at, you know, getting to the byline, cutting it back, and her decision making and the passes she makes are so good, and just her movement and she's just so dynamic and strong. Um, definitely Lauren Hemp for me today. Lauren Hemp, player of the match, making way to be replaced by. Jess Park. Well, it'll be job done for Gareth Taylor's side, but attention will turn after the match, no doubt, to that injury suffered by Chloe Kelly. The striker who scored the opening two goals in this match going off midway through the second half with what appeared to be a serious knee injury. We can only hope that it is not as serious as it first looked. Yeah, she's been instrumental this season for Man City and, you know, the way they play. You know, they play to her strengths and, you know, her strengths are scoring goals and getting assists. So. Um, yeah, it, she's instrumental for them, so I think they'll be looking at that and, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed that, you know, everything's OK after the game. Here is Greenwood and Morgan, who scored the third goal for Manchester City. It wasn't just her first WSL goal for Man City, it's her first ever senior goal. A moment that... Esme Morgan will remember for a long, long time. Oh. Been a fine performance from Hannah Hampton. Her goal has been breached three times. Yeah, I mean, she's really kept her team in it and, you know, kept the score down. Um, you know, they they have defended resolutely for large parts of the game and little lapses in concentration here and there have allowed Man City to get through and, you know, to really pepper Hampton's goal. Here is Stanway. Greenwood. Stanway from distance. And that one won't be testing Hannah Hampton. Yeah, that's her third one of the day. You know, I think she's waiting to hit one sweet. But yeah, it's not happened for her today. Georgia Stanway, homegrown product from the Manchester City Academy. Won the double with the club in 2016. Five goals this season in the WSL, but hasn't quite got her shooting boots on this afternoon. As we await the Fourth official, Kirsty Dow, who will tell us 
that we have nine minutes of additional time to play at the end of this match because of that injury to Chloe Kelly. Here's Becky. It's Manchester City go in search of a fourth. Caroline Weir also not really with her shooting boots today, missing that penalty and forcing another save from Hampton. The City come forward again. Well, it is job done for Manchester City this afternoon, but it's out of their hands, Becky Spencer, because Chelsea, if they win their final two matches, will be crowned WSL champions. And I know you're playing Chelsea in midweek. You could have a big say as to where the WSL title ends up. Manchester City have done their bit. Yeah, I mean, it just proves, you know, the, the like you said before, the game between Chelsea and Man City early on in the season when Chelsea won just shows how, you know, how important it actually was to where this season may, you know, how this title may end up. Um, you know, obviously we play Chelsea on, on Wednesday and, you know, it's a tough task for us, but, you know, we we need to win too. You know, we're not ma mathematically safe yet either. So, you know, we always, you know, go into each game, you know, equally as any other. So for us, yeah, we'll try our best. And, you know, we've got Chelsea, you know, who are a formidable force and who will be on such a high from, from today's result. Well, it has been uh, potentially a, a decisive afternoon in the WSL. Offside flag is up. That's going to be a free kick to Manchester City. That's going to be a goal kick. We will... Uh, bring you up to date with how the WSL ta uh, table looks at the end of this match. I mentioned it has been relatively decisive this afternoon. A couple of issues uh, as good as resolved. Gareth Taylor with his assistant Alan Marne, the former Republic of Ireland international. Manchester City going in search of a fourth. Holloway defending. It's a combination of Ruby Mason, Harriet Scott. Claiming that that should not have been a, a corner, but a corner was given and a corner has already been taken. Too quickly for the Referees liking. Just allows Manchester City another option to get shirts forward. Greenwood up from the back. It's a ricocheted into the net. And Manchester City have scored deep in stoppage time. It is the substitute, Sam Mewis, who lashed the ball home. Hannah Hampton beaten once again, and Manchester City have four. Yeah, I mean, when you have an accumulation of corners, um, and they've looked threatening all day from each and every corner, and I, I think there's like a lack of marking or something's not right, that maybe the second phase of balls, people are not looking on to players, and... You know, it's, it's a similar goal to the last one, really, in, in some respects. But, yeah, it's another really good corner. And, yeah, it's just another tap-in. So, I think for Birmingham, they are going to be disappointed with the manner in which they've conceded from these set-pieces. Seventh of the season for Sam Mewis. She scored twice against Birmingham in the reverse fixture and has come off the bench to score against them once again. And the scoreline here is identical to how it finished at St George's Park. Manchester City, four goals to the good. Could they make it five? Weir with the long-range effort. Dips wide.
Yeah, like I was just saying, Birmingham have been excellent in how they've actually defended the middle of the pitch. They've limited so many chances and, you know, it's just so disappointing, you know, as a team when you concede set pieces and especially when, you know, they're not clear cut chances that they've actually had. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been a bit of disappointing from, you know, the set piece perspective, but the rest of the game they've defended really resolutely and, you know, they've stuck to their task really, really well. Manchester City Mines will quickly turn to teammate Chloe Kelly, no doubt, who got the first two goals. Going off with that serious-looking knee injury in the second half. Here's Lavelle. Walsh. Bronze. Walsh. Well, Manchester City are set to stretch their unbeaten run in the WSL to 17 matches. That defeat to Chelsea in October, their solitary loss of the season. And yet, it still might not be enough to claim the title. Here is Walsh, Manchester City, on the hunt for goals now in injury time. Greenwood. And here is Morgan, fresh from scoring her first ever goal in senior football. Collected again by Hannah Hampton. Tough afternoon, really, for Hannah Hampton. It's been a, a fine performance, a penalty save and a number of other saves, and yet still on the losing side and still lose by four. Yeah, I mean, it's such a frustrating position sometimes being a goalkeeper. You know, you can keep the minute for as long as possible. You can keep the score down. But, you know, when your team don't really look like scoring or creating any chances, really, you're just waiting for each chance to come. And, you know, in the, at the end of it, you end up touching the ball more than any of your, your teammates, really, you know, because she's been peppered today. And she's, you know, she stood up to the task really, really well. And, you know, sometimes our defenders have let her down in, you know, especially the corner situations. One last chance, perhaps, for City is that handball. Stanway with the shot. Handball not given by the referee. The shot from Stanway, again off target. And that might just be that in terms of the scoreline. Well, it was Emma Kelly that the ball ricocheted off. It appeared to be handball, but it fell kindly into the path of Stanway. And Emily Heaslip, the referee, electing not to point to the spot for the second time this afternoon. I think on another day, Stanway would finish that. But, you know, she's had quite a, an afternoon where I think she's quite frustrated with how, you know, her finishing has been because she's capable of, you know, some wonderful strikes. So I think a bit of frustration may have set in and, you know, on another day she would have buried that. Well, the WSL title race is still alive. Manchester City have done their bit. They have ensured that the title race will go down to the final day of the season. They've seen off Birmingham City by four goals to nil. Gareth Taylor will be concerned about the injury to his striker, Chloe Kelly, who came off in the second half after scoring a brace in the first 45 minutes. Hannah Hampton, the Birmingham City keeper, had a fine match, saving a penalty from Caroline Weir and a number, number of other good stops as well. But two goals in the second half from Esme Morgan, the youngster getting her first ever goal in senior football. 
and then Sam Mewis making it 4-0 in the second half, adding to that brace from Chloe Kelly. It means it is job done then for Manchester City. Chelsea can win the title if they win their next two matches, but Manchester City are still in it. They've beaten Birmingham by four goals to nil. So as we keep doing our WSL World Fixtures, we might say thank you on behalf of some of the players and managers of the Morris and Kayla Manchester City. A huge thank you to our amazing fans for the great way to the low support this season. Of course, we wish you great luck with these uh, games. So job done then, Manchester City 4, Birmingham City 0 at the Academy Stadium. Becky Spencer is alongside me. You can see there Gareth Taylor. It's a wry smile, it's a, it's a loose smile because although Manchester City have won, they've kept the title race alive. Uh, you sense that perhaps attention is turning to Chloe Kelly and that serious injury that she suffered. Yeah, for sure. You know, the, the job's done uh, in terms of the performance. A very professional performance by, by Man City today. But, you know, when, it, when one of your formidable players, and you know, goes down with an injury like that, you know, it kind of dampens the you know, the result and, and everyone's spirits because everyone will be, you know, thinking about, you know, how she is and hopefully, like I said earlier, you know, it wasn't as bad as what it seems and, you know, she can get back on the pitch as soon as possible. And a quick word about Birmingham City. They came with a game plan and they executed it well, but in the end, Manchester City's quality was, was just too much. Yeah, they defended, you know, resolutely throughout the game. You know, they, there wasn't many clear-cut chances through the centre of, of the Birmingham defence, which is, you know, something really promising for them. Um, but, you know, were, the quality of Man City is just too much. And when you've got no outlet and when you've got no real strike forces, you know, when you go 2-0 down, it just becomes really difficult to kind of dig yourself out of that hole. But from a Birmingham perspective, you know, they could be, you know, happy with, you know, how they're defended for large parts of the game. Well, we mentioned that it has been a potentially decisive day in the WSL. Let us take a look at the table, how it currently stands then. Manchester City move top taking over from Chelsea, but uh, that's until potentially Wednesday evening when Emma Hayes' side are away at Tottenham. You can see if Chelsea win their final two matches, they will win the title. It's Champions League football for Arsenal, barring a miraculous uh, swing in goal difference next season. Their third, Manchester United, three points behind in fourth with an inferior goal difference. Birmingham City, they stay in 10th, just a point ahead of Aston Villa, but the goal difference of Bristol City rooted to the bottom means that uh, Birmingham, barring a possible points deduction that we'll find out potentially about next week, should be safe. Well, don't forget, you can see uh, all of uh, the highlights of today's WSL action on the Women's Football Show. It's uh, all the goals and all the analysis as well. Uh, that comes up on uh, BBC One at 11.35 p.m. So uh, join us for that one. Thank you very much to uh, Tottenham keeper Becky Spencer for joining us today and being part of our coverage. Good luck to, to Becky as well against Chelsea uh, in midweek. But from myself, Paul Scott, the rest of the team here, thank you very much for watching. We will see you next time.